All right, welcome to the Sweet Talk. Today is Monday, October 14, 2019. I am your host, Kim Matina, and I have on my show today my friend Kathy Kurznowski from New Jersey. Woohoo! She's actually from the western part of the state where I'm near the shore. Um, so, welcome to the show, Kathy. Thank you for being on. And thanks for having me. This is fun. What an honor to be here. Oh my gosh, it's an honor to have you on my show. We've been trying to catch up for so long and and I'm glad that we actually tried to uh to connect and you know, you're going to bring your expertise on today and talk about um Flipgrid and Flippons and what you, how you can use it in the classroom. But why don't you for the people that don't know you, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience and tell everyone what you do and um you know, what you do every day. <laughs> Every day I run ragged like the rest of you. <laughs> I'm a, yeah. oh boy, all of us in education, right? I'm a, I'm a tech, officially I'm a technology integration specialist. So I'm like a tech coach. That's just what I've called my position. And I primarily work with elementary schools in my district, which is Washington Township School District in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Um, I work, you know, I work a little bit with the rest of the district at large, but primarily I'm working with elementary schools and just having a good old time doing it. And when I can, I go to conferences and I like to learn and ed camps and workshops and all kinds of things so I can network with great people like Kim Matina. Well, Kathy, you are too modest. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug in a little bit here for you. So Kathy is uh, like you know, an MIE, which is like a Microsoft Innovator Educator, I think. Is that, is that right? Yeah, Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert and Trainer. There you go. <clears throat> and she has a blog called <laughs> Innovation Integration. That's exactly. Oh, my gosh, you've done some research. Yes, that's exactly. Well, you know, you're my friend. I know what you do. Integration, you know, innovation. We got, yeah. We got to plug it in, you know. And, um, and she's a Flipgrid e expert. Uh, I know you're a Flipgrid ambassador and a Wakelet ambassador. And honestly, like I, I've heard about these tools and I've used Flipgrid in the past. Um, but recently I got on the Wakelet wave um, because of you. I saw all the tweets um, on Twitter about Wakelet and I just love Wakelet. So I'm glad that I'm in that community as well. But tonight we're gonna talk about Flipgrid because um, Flipgrid has a nice uh, a nice integration with uh, classrooms and teachers and students and it's so easy and I know you're like the Miss Flipgrid expert with your flip flip hunts <laughs> um, so uh, why don't you explain and share uh, what you know and what how we can use flip hunts in the classroom Okay, so just a real super, super, super basic about Flipgrid itself. So Flipgrid, yeah, I am, I'm a lover of Flipgrid. I love the team, I love the tool, I love the team, I love the people, I love the people in the community, I love everybody up at headquarters. It's just revolutionary. It's an amazing site, can be used with little kids. They always say it's from preschool to PhD, right? So kind of everybody, everybody alive can use Flipgrid for something, every subject, every grade, every ability, which is so cool. And at its very simplest, because there's so much it can do, but it's very simplest. It's, it's a video response system. So a teacher or somebody puts up a prompt and, of some sort. So that could be a, you know, a text prompt or a picture prompt or a video prompt, some sort of discussion prompt. And then the students respond to that or they show what they know by clicking a pretty little green plus sign icon and then talking into a video camera and you know kids are really pretty comfortable with doing that most of the time more so than us adults and I think it's just a wonderful way to find out what kids know and what they think and what their feelings are and, and sharing their knowledge and their ideas verbally and us being able to capture it on a video so we're really just empowering them to share their voice and let them know that we and and their peers, right? Because everybody in their class can see these responses generally. Um, they have an audience and people want to listen to what they have to say, so. Yeah, you know, and it's funny. Um, I went to a conference, I don't know when it was, and I, it was a session about Flipgrid. And uh, one of the people in the uh, session said that they love Flipgrid because it gives all students a voice, even the shy ones. And 
I also uh, pass this along to staff at my school as well that um, for ESL students or for students who are taking a second language or Spanish or whatnot, um, it, it's a great tool to check for fluency. So like, I, you know, I am encouraging the world language teachers at my school to use it for fluency to check for that. And, um, you know, they, they do like the idea. I just got to get them more involved because they're limited with the devices that they're using. But um, they did like that idea and they do like having the option to give in all students a voice. So, yep. you know, it's very important. You know, you get some students that are not camera shy and they're very, you know, comfortable in front of the camera. And then you still have students that are, you know, a little timid and stuff. So it gives them all a chance to respond at, in the class or at home. And I, you know, last year I was really, really fortunate to travel to to London. And there's a big conference in London. It's kind of like our ISTE in America. They have one over there called BET. And I was speaking on behalf of Flipgrid. I had I had some presentations. And during one of those presentations, I shared the fact that when I was in elementary school, I was repeatedly voted the most bashful. Really, really, I was a super, super. Not shy. you. I don't think you would be bashful. I was. My face would get red, and I would sit in the back. I didn't like to talk. The other kids knew I didn't like to talk. I was that. I I knew things, but I would write them on paper and pass it forward. So I just didn't have opportunities like this. And I think we educators, not only are we lucky to have this technology, but I think it's our job to give kids these opportunities. Because if we're going to reach all learners, there are kids like me who need practice to develop that voice, so. Exactly, yeah. exactly, I agree. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to say that because, you know, Flipgrid is, um, like you just summed it up really quick. It's a student response system. And students need to have a device with a webcam. It could be a Chromebook, an iPad, uh, a desktop computer with a webcam. Um, anything that has a webcam it's very it's very simple um, they can join your grid with a code and respond to the prompt in there so um, you just summed it up I wrote it down student response system because that's basically what it is a video um, based. yeah video based yeah. Which is so nice. yeah yeah, video based. So, so why don't you go ahead and, and explain like what flip punts is? Because honestly, like I know this is um, something big. I always see on Twitter and I see you blogging about it all the time and people are retweeting about it. Me personally, I don't know anything about flip punts and I'm really looking forward to, to learning about this because, um, you know, I have to present on Flipgrid uh, during my, uh, PD day and I want to pass this information along so I think that you know it's worthy of speaking about since it's got so many people following you <laughs> You're trending well, it's there. just because it's fun so I don't think it's you know anything about me or whatever but I think people in education like things that are fun and so flip hunt is just a scavenger it's a scavenger hunt Okay. Flipgrid as the tool. And I recently, I presented on this recently, and I said, you know, when I was a little kid, we had scavenger hunts that looked, they were on paper, and it was something like go find an acorn or go find a square rock or, you know, these kinds of things. And so they were objects that we were finding. And then I remember when I was a teenager, um, digital digital cameras came out in life or Polaroids, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Somebody invented photo scavenger hunts and they were really fun too. You know, like get your whole team making a human pyramid in front of the police station or, you know, walk through a drive through and everybody, you know, wave from the drive. It was just, that was fun. So this is taking it to the next level because we have the technology and everybody's, you know, got one of these in their hands somewhere. And this is, instead of it being an object or a photograph, now it's got to include movement. And so a flip hunt is a video based scavenger hunt using Flipgrid as the medium to collect the responses to these. So when you say it's a scavenger hunt with movement, what do you, can you, you know, clarify what that means? Can I screen share? Yeah, please do. Okay, because this will help me tell some of the story. So let me see if I can. All right. So can, can you see this? Yes. Cool. This is my blog, and I will share this on all the resources at the end. So I have, I have a blog. Yeah, it's a WordPress blog. But on here, it tells the story of where this whole thing 
came from. And I kind of linked to previous blogs. And here it says ed tech on a field trip. And that's really where it all started. I had a first grade teacher who was taking her students on a field trip. And she said, Kath, I want to do something with technology on my field trip. Can you come up with any ideas? And I was so in love with this girl, so impressed because a teacher has honestly, in all my years of doing this, never asked me how to infuse or integrate tech on a field trip. So I came home and I thought about a variety of different things and how are we going to get devices and they were going to a zoo, they were going to Philadelphia Zoo. So I ended up coming up with the idea of a scavenger hunt and I was playing around with ideas, you know, each mom could have an iPad and maybe take pictures of the kids and and as this idea evolved in my brain, I thought, oh my goodness, Flipgrid, it's safe, it's secure, each mom can have an iPad, she can capture the students doing various tasks, we can make this really fun and engaging, and we can tie it to curriculum, and everybody's contributing to the same grid. And then when they got back to school, they could really share this and laugh about it and have some fun. So I'm going to take you, if I may, over to show you that very first one. I remember, I okay. remember you explaining this to me. Um, this was a long time ago, right? This was, yeah, this was probably two years ago when this first happened. And here were some of the ideas. But what you can see here is each one has some kind of movement or action. I mean, the kids are, are moving and because it's a video, right? We don't want to just take a picture. And you can see that I've tied it to curriculum. So Look at um, the second one, a creature that sleeps upside down. Um, the third one, a creature that is an herbivore. And that was a vocabulary word that they had learned. But we're not just taking a picture of an herbivore. We're going to have one child in the group make a funny face in front of an herbivore. Um, okay. Three children making fishy lips at an animal that mostly lives in water but is not a fish. So it had some kind of an action verb tied with some piece of curriculum. And it made it really fun and engaging. So... It was, it was popular. It was a hit. And from then, let me come back to this. It just started to evolve. And I started to think of other ways, if I can scroll down this page. There we go. All right. So I'll come to this. This was my, this was the next one I invented. I used to teach the skeletal system. So look here, these are curricular objectives that we had when we taught the skeletal system, but you're almost, you're assessing almost through these tasks. So I make the list and I have a good time making the list on a Google Doc or a Microsoft Word Doc because you can attach either a Google Doc or a Microsoft Word Doc to any flip flipgrid topic that you create. Okay. So this is great and I'll show you how to do this if you're curious. So uh, just take a little look at one of these. Um, say something humorous as you point to your humorous and that would be like a little kid telling a, a joke you know why they did that. Um, move your mandible side to side while you say fluffy bunny five times, right? And so your mandible is your jaw. And so you're really assessing knowledge. The kids are having fun. They don't even realize that they're learning or being tested, if you wanted to call it that. And they're just having a good time. Here's a few more examples. And I just show this one always next to, because this is kind of where I went with it next. This is a, a leveled, a scaffolded flip hunt. So there are no point values that I've assigned on this, although I've seen people do that. But this one is, if you feel comfortable taking a green, you know, challenge, go ahead and do a green challenge. But look at the last red challenge on here. It says, construct a dodecahedron out of straws. Show that on video and explain how you made it and how many vertices it has. So this is a more advanced challenge. So with this, you're really meeting the needs of everybody in your class because they can kind of pick and choose. Or you can steer them. Guys, I want you to take at least one yellow. Come on, you've got to yeah, try yeah. And so, yeah, it's just a, a consideration when you are planning one of these. And speaking of considerations, I'll come down here. I came up with an infographic I made. Just considerations you might want to have when you're building one of these on your own. Are kids going to play individually with partners or on teams? Are you keeping score? Are you assigning points to things? How long is this game going to last? One class period? During a unit, like during your entire rainforest unit? Will it last for a week, you know, and you'll tally up points at the end? It's just something to think about as you're planning. And even where is it going to be? Do the kids have to stay in the classroom? Can they go out in the school? Are they allowed in the schoolyard to get some of these clues? You know, are they allowed to go bug the principal to do something? So just some fun things to think about as you're planning one of these. So you create a grid for your class, and then in your grid you have a topic. 
Yep. And then your topic is basically your flip hunt. Yep. Okay, so then, okay, so out of the flip grid, you create a Google Doc or another type of document, and you have your objectives on there that you want your students to complete. Yep. Okay. Now, are they recording five objectives in one video setting, or do you have multiple um, topics for that? Do you have one topic with like a maybe a three minute limit, or do you have multiple topics for multiple objectives? I'll take you to a fun one that I've just done recently. Let me see if I can do this. So this one I did as a PD one. I was at a, at a workshop last weekend somewhere in New Jersey at, at a great workshop called Rewire. And so I made a grid. And, you know, in Flipgrid, a grid is almost like a website. So this is a whole grid. And, and you know, we can have a code to that. And at this Rewire event, I had three topics. And this is what topics look like in Flipgrid. So I had one for introductions just for people to play with if they didn't know Flipgrid. I had the flip hunt itself, and then I had reflections if anybody wanted to go back afterwards. Let me take you to this topic. So when I created this topic, I put the directions up here at the top. Um, you know, I, I, I challenge people to play with a partner. They feel a little bit more comfortable doing that. And the directions are at the top. And right here, I attached the flip hunt. Do you want to see some of the things that they had to do? Yeah. <laughs> So this is really, this is a great PD thing for people who've never done Flipgrid at all. If you want to introduce people to Flipgrid, I, you said you're doing a PD soon. The best way to get people using Flipgrid is to have them do this because they just think it's so much fun. They're playing with their friends. They're being really silly. They're roaming the schools. You just, you're causing a ruckus. It's just great fun. Okay. So, and, and, and they obviously have to have their phones, right? Yeah, but and so even at this workshop, I said one phone per, per, per partnership, and you need the Flipgrid app on your phone. So, you know, when they came in the room, I, I had a sign on the board, please get the Flipgrid app, you know, and most people had it. If they didn't, I said, find a partner who does, and you're going to wander out and try to do some of these tasks. Okay. So my advice, so I have, I have several pieces of advice. So here I am on just the Google Doc. I called this one the Rewire Flip Hunt, and... I just started going crazy thinking of silly things. This was my objective. So the first one, you know, coffee and toast. Find a new pal that you just met here today. You each need to say a unique toast to each other and then clink your coffee cups <laughs> with yours rhymes and feel free to write a draft on a napkin, you know, and that was just all kinds of fun. So I, I do always name my my challenges so that each one has some sort of a name at the beginning and I underline that and I'll show you why I do that in just a minute and then notice how long each one is it's not point to a, a verb you know it's nothing stagnant it's definitely got some description and some action and some silliness in it and there were just some fun fun things in there zing and zoom act out any three verbs that begin with Z and they had to use the pause feature on the camera. And these were just hysterical. They were funny, huh? Um, this was at a thing. Let me see. Oh, this one's so cute. Custodial care. Show your custodian that you care by gifting him or her a free coffee or dessert to enjoy while pushing him down the hallway <laughs> and singing for he's a jolly good fellow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you come up with these? All of them, and you're welcome to steal them. Like, oh I share gosh. these this is actually in the resource that I'll share today. This one was really funny. I did have two groups who were really, really brave, and they did this awesomest announcer one at this conference. Get on the school's PA system and sing something. Anything. <laughs> really have to use the school's PA system. Yes, while it's on. And you can use, the, there's a pixelated filter now in Flipgrid where they could mask their identity. And we just, we had grown-ups doing these, and you can see why they're going to love Flipgrid after doing something. Okay, yeah, because all of these objectives are very, like, they're, they're getting people involved, they're moving, they're socializing, they're collaborating, you know, so it's, it's, it's good. It's really, it's really uh, dynamic. Fun for team building. Yeah. I Icebreakers. Throw in some things just to show them, like, I did racket writing, just to show them, like, okay, handwriting could kind of come in there. You know, I put in social studies. I think, oh, Mayflower, I put in, I was just trying to show them that sometimes you can think, what, what is your curriculum? What are you teaching right now? How could you get really crazy or crafty to bring in 
Yeah, yeah so to it, make the connection. And it's, you know, I've seen some people do what they're calling a flip hunt. And, and, and okay, so here's a what not to do. I've seen some people have something that's called a flip hunt and it's, you know, I've seen it on social media and the challenges look like this. Find a simile. And, <laughs> and do what with it? <laughs> like, read it? And I said, well, you know, this, there's no silliness. There's no movement, you know, and if it says find a simile, find a metaphor, find it for that, you need a highlighter. You don't need a flip hunt, right? Yeah. Flip hunt really should be interactive and fun and silly and movement. Um, I ran one just like the one you're looking at, at my school for professional development. I called it the great WTPS flip hunt for my district. And I ran <laughs> it over a week and a half because teachers are busy. And so this was something they could do on their prep or after school or, you know, whatever. And it got competitive, you know, it got it pretty did? Really? Yeah. Yeah. And oh, there was a prize attached, of course, you know, so I bought a gift card and the winning team was going to get prize, a prize. So. And what, um, and what did you do to, to um, score them? Like how many objectives they finished or like, how did you determine who was the winner? I just said, whoever completes the most challenges. I was really just trying to get buy-in. And okay. I knew that if some teachers who were reluctant to do this saw silly teachers in the hallway, that they might be like, what are you guys doing? Is it hard? No, we, well, we can do it too. And I wanted to draw some people out with this. So, okay. so you left it open for like a specific time period. Yep, for a week and a half. So okay. it's fun to, it doesn't have to be a one day or a one class period or a, I, the one I did at Rewire, I did in, I think, you know, 20 minutes. Everybody had to roam around and do challenges. Let me see if I come back. Um, this oh, is this, clever. This is really clever. I really like this. This is where Flip Hunt was really born. So after the, um, let me see if I can take you over here. After the one that I did with the teacher, Flip Grid had a giant conference out in Minneapolis and all these people flew out there. This was a year, summer of 2018. And I flew out for this too. And I had an opportunity to, in 15 minutes, present Flip Hunt for the very first time. Nobody had ever heard of it. It wasn't even a word at the time. And so I thought, okay, here we go. Here's what it is. So I had created this pre-conference. There were about 600 people who flew into town for this. There were Microsoft people and Flipgrid people and uh, just wonderful, energetic people. And we were there for two or three days. So I created the Flip Hunt, the Flipgrid Live Flip Hunt. And it was the first one. And let me see if I can come in here. It has grown. And you can see that it's grown to include all these topics. I'll tell you why in a minute. But this was the original. The original flip. Now, we're in Minneapolis. <laughs> not myself, Kim. It's three pages long. <laughs> Look, all of these challenges had to do with either Flipgrid or Microsoft or Minneapolis. So, okay. You did this by yourself in 15 yeah. minutes? Well, no, I made this list before I ever got to Minneapolis. Oh, but okay. I introduced it to people and told them how to do this. You click on it, you know, the digital resource is right there on Flipgrid. Um, I usually have printed out copies too, because people do like to carry around a piece of paper and check them off sometimes. Right. Because it's linked to the topic, you can always just click on it right there on the grid on your device too and have it digitally. So it's nice that way. But you can see where it got, it just, look, PD. So I was thinking professional development, but I named it that hug a Minneapolis police officer. If you're not a hugger, make up a cool multi-step handshake and do that instead. And oh my gosh. For people to run around Minneapolis during this three-day event and do as many or as, get as crazy as they wanted to by themselves with a friend. Um, it was just fun. That is awesome. I really yeah. like how, you know, like I had no idea what it really was, but I like how, you know, it's really, it really is collaboration and communication because you have to work with a partner, try to, try to, you know, uh, you know, solve these little, I don't know, objectives, if you want to call them or goals and move on to the next one. And it would be pretty cool if you had it like at a timer, see how many people really go crazy. So I, um, for everything in Flipgrid, whenever you set up a topic, um, and I do this as a topic. So people have said to me, do you make a grid where each thing is a different challenge? No, I, because I'm not that organized. <laughs> <laughs> I always make a topic. So I can make a grid called all of my flip hunts. And then I make a topic for, you know, the Kim Matina flip hunt or whatever, whatever that day is. 
And then I just put all of my challenges attached to that topic and everybody responds on that topic. Let me see if I can take you over to one. Because what I do is I ask them, oh, that was my, oops. But then afterwards you have to go through and watch all the all the videos. So, so the I video set the max I set the maximum length at fifteen or thirty seconds. Oh, okay. Because I was gonna say that could take a long time. Yeah. Yeah, you can set it anywhere from fifteen seconds to five minutes in Flipgrid. And I always yeah, good point. I always set it for either fifteen seconds or thirty seconds. Um, and so here well, I'm gonna show you some of these people. <laughs> <laughs> I did not ask their permission, but this should be pretty fun. They say they were singing over the Look, PA system. A boom. Look, a flag. <laughs> Look, people. <laughs> that was being processed. This was write something with your non dominant hand. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> So I'll come out, but these were all responses. And you know, once, once a flip hunt is done and everybody comes back to the room, one of the best parts is, okay guys, now we're gonna look at everybody's videos. And so we kind of go through them and just have a good time celebrating, celebrating everybody's spirit. Well, that's, that's really, I, I do wanna do this now for my PD day. <laughs> I gotta start thinking of, way, of things that I need to do for a GTMS staff. That's funny. But so you know what, it really gives them like a really good um, uh, idea of, of the tool and then, you know, gearing it to your curriculum. You can meet any subject area. You can do any standard with it because you showed that before, even with the geometry part. Um, so, I mean, it's just really thinking out of the box. Yeah. Yep. You know, and you know what was, what's really fun, especially when I introduce this to teachers, and I would do the same thing with kids. Flipgrid has cool tools in there right now. So I don't know if you've, you've seen the latest, but they have, you can now add text to a video. So, you know, you can put text up here. Uh, they have, they have a few filters. Some of the, most of them are just color filters. Um, but there's one that's pixelated that you just saw. You can add stickers and emojis and different things like that now. And so I when I set people loose on this flip hunt, I said, you know, gang, you might notice that there are cool little icons down the bottom. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but have fun exploring them because we play to learn, right? And I'm a big fan of play to learn. So if they're out there and they're trying to do challenges and they're pushing buttons and they don't know what they do, I, we encourage that. So yeah. they had some fun figuring those things out too. And not everything needs a direction. I mean, there's just some great fun in exploration. Yeah, exactly. You know, now what, so what kind of feedback did you get from staff after they completed this flip hunt? Oh, everybody loves it. It's they just did. great. Yeah. It's, it builds team. It's, it's great spirit. They want other people to try it. Um, it's caught on, you know, you've, you've probably seen the hashtag flip grid fever. So this most certainly definitely inspires Flipgrid fever uh, throughout a school, you know, when you've got people banging on cowbells and running around the school and taking over the PA system and <laughs> yeah, like totally down the hallway. And yeah, it, it builds, it just, and it will do that for a class too, right? So the, the shy kids, if you pair them with somebody else, there's a little accountability. Um, if, if somebody is super, super shy, they can be the filmer, right? They can be the videographer while the other kid or kids on the team sort of act things out and I've, I've seen that half they're still part of the action so do you do you make your kids in the classroom actually um like you know so you're elementary school so do you keep them in the class while they're doing the flip punt or do you actually see teachers taking them out outside to do to do the flip hunts like what what give me a little bit of um some feedback on the student interaction with a flip hunt and how the teachers are conducting them. You've got, you've got to know your classroom and know your kids. I am, I am a huge fan. You'll see me praise people online when they, because I'll, I, if you search the hashtag flip hunt, you'll find gobs and gobs of ideas from people who are way more creative than I am. They're out there and, so, and they're all over the hashtag on Flipgrid. And sometimes I'll praise people when I see that they've let kids go outside 
or they've let kids, you know, go interview the librarian about this. Go ask the art teacher if you can have six of these and bring it back and juggle them. Or, you know, go ask the principal, go ask the principal to find a simile in this book and have him read it to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, now there's movement and it's fun and, and it gets everybody involved. So if you're feeling brave, I do. I like it better when kids can move around the classroom for sure. But if they can get out, that's even better. I can see, I can see this being done in the beginning of the school year as like an icebreaker, uh, getting to know your, your fellow, you know, your fellow peers, um, even for student teacher, uh, um, relationships. Um, like it's really, I can see a lot of use with that. Um, oops. Wait a minute. Am I sure? There we go. I, I could see a lot, like I could see a lot of um, icebreakers in the beginning of the school year with Flipgrid and just doing a scavenger hunt. You know, this is awesome. I'm messing I up. I really, I really like this. <laughs> what did you say? I'm messing up with sharing my screen because there you I'm, are. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm really going to do this, Kathy. I'm going to let you know. I hope you do. It's so much fun. I'll I'm tell you what's really fun is just making making the challenges. Yeah. It's well, nice. you have to think of like some like like I have to actually look at your list and get some ideas from there and then tweak it a little bit because like that's where I'm weak. Like I can't think of things like that on the fly. I got to get somebody's idea and then I can run with it and then tweak it to to my own, you know. Yeah. But uh I definitely, I definitely want to do this now for my PD day because I think it will definitely give the the teachers an idea of how to use it, and then just put like a ten minute time limit on it, you know. A ten minute? Oh, on them running around the school? Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. I think. Well, here's here's how I would suggest structuring it. If you're going to use it for PD, take about fifteen minutes in the beginning to introduce the flip hunt and I say 15 minutes because you'll always have a few people who don't even know what flip grid is so you have okay. to have a few basics there just you know push the green button this is what comes up I usually hold up a phone and I model it myself first and you know get a little silly so they can just see you know you click the arrow next screen next screen you know click submit it goes on the grid so I do take just a few moments to do a basic overview maybe 15 minutes then I set them free for 20 or 30 minutes, longer if you've got it, and let them go out and do flip hunts and see how many you can get. But always make sure you leave time at the end, at, 10, at least 10, 15 or more minutes for a really good debrief. That's to share and showcase the crazy videos and to celebrate everybody who participated, but also you know to take questions. And best of all, for me, my favorite part is when I leave enough time at the end for people to say, here's how I would use it with my class. And here's how I would use it from my class. That's where I start to learn, right? Because, and they all start to learn because they, as soon as you figure out how to infuse this with your curriculum, it's just, it becomes a really powerful learning tool. Wow. Now, so you usually do this in an hour then? A minimum of an hour. I just, I just was talking to a friend last night. She has 90 minutes and I was so jealous. 90 minutes would be great. Really? <laughs> yeah, if you have it. For wow. Like, yeah. I'm, I don't know. I'm going to have to see because I was going to do Wakelet and Flipgrid in the same session, like the dynamic duo, um, because, you know, you can integrate both tools um, with each other. So I was going to do that, but I don't know. Now you got me thinking really about trying to, I don't know. I got to, I got to rethink that because this might be the way to do it. <laughs> I got to, I got to see what, I got to see, I got to, I got to get some ideas and see how I can use that. Maybe, I don't know. Cause I don't want to not do Wakelet as well. You know what I mean? I want to do both, but, mm -hmm. um, cause I got to do other topics too, but the flip hunt, I really, I really like it. I really do. Like I actually, I created a grid for back to school and I had teachers, um, respond in there just like the first week of school when they had to come to my class and go over tech integration stuff and they responded and they liked it. But I don't think people are really using it because, you know, you start getting into a routine and you start going back into your, your, you know, your old ways and, you know, you're not thinking about what you just did back in September. Cause right now we're in the middle of October. That was like so long ago, you know? So I think, 
re reintroducing it again in November would hopefully re give people a different, um, you know, rethink their their assessments or their activities in the class. So I don't remind them. Of it there. Yeah. Yeah. So, Kim, I, you're just you're giving me ideas. This always happens when we talk, right? You so yeah. Because you you basically want to remind them that Flipgrid is there and it's there for them and they can do amazing things with it. You could do a, a, a one every month. You could have a Flipgrid staff challenge every month and theme it around. You know, the, your December one could be around the December holidays. Yeah, that's and, true. And it would be really fun and really silly and just a great team builder. And the more that they're doing, people who didn't try it in November will hop on in December and you'll find more and more engagement. By the way, let me say this before I forget. So at, whenever I present Flipgrid, if I have even one minute left at the end, I always show people the disco library. Do you know what, in Flipgrid, it used to be called the Discovery Library, but my friends at Flipgrid are super crazy and fun and funky and whatever. <laughs> so they, it's no longer Discovery, it's the Disco Library, right? And, and it's just a whole bunch of ideas that have been contributed, almost 10,000 ideas by the Flipgrid community, people all over the world. And you can steal those ideas and like copy them to your own grid. Okay. So you can filter it by grade, by subject, by whatever. So just to get ideas if people have a rough time getting started, that's where I point them because it's a collective genius of people around the world. Okay. I'll have to check that out. Where is that at in Flipgrid? At the very, do I have it open here? At the very, I don't have to be on my educator dashboard. I don't know if I have it open. But it's, I mean, is it obvious in the dashboard? It is. Okay. Yeah. It's right up at the top. Can you still see my screen? Yeah. Oh, it's I right see there. it. Yep. Disco yeah, library. Right here. And then there's a bunch of really cool stuff at the top, but I kind of, when I have a second, I bring people right down here because this is where you can sort by, you know, is it for elementary school or middle school? You know, what subject do you want to look for? Um, here, I'll do CTE. And then you can even put in keyword search topics. And then you can look through great things that have been this one. I know this girl Kylie from Australia and she's added this one here. And so I can take a look at her topic. I can see her topper and you know, the, the image that she put up there. I can see the description of it. I can see everything about it. And if I like this one, I can click. I want to add this to my, my grid called my grid. <laughs> <laughs> I can click add and look what happens. It automatically just got added to my grid, but it opened in tweaking mode. So now I can change any of the settings Kylie did. I don't want kids to have a minute and 30 seconds. I want them to have 30 seconds. I don't want them to do this last part, you know, that's going to take too long. And so I can tweak all of her settings, click update topic, and boom, this is on my grid and I didn't have to do anything. I borrowed wow. it from somebody else. So yeah, I usually send people there in the last couple of minutes that I have, especially for the newbies who aren't sure how to get started or where to find ideas. Here are ideas. Okay, cool. All right. I'm glad you actually mentioned that. I didn't know about the disco library. So there's so many things like I know Flipgrid's got so many new features now and I kind of just stick with what I know and because, uh, you know, we all have such time constraints in education, right? So, um, I just kind of stick with what I know and, and basically that's it. So what, tell us about the mixtapes. I know that's a new feature. Yeah, actually I wanted to come back to this when you mentioned your ESL teacher friends and, you know, foreign language speakers. I it's Mixtapes is great for everything. This is my favorite story though. A mixtape is you can pick any video from any of your grids and sort of earmark it and pull them together and put them in one collection called a mixtape. And so I use this story. So if you had a little kid in your class, I'm thinking of a boy I know named Emmanuel, non-English speaking student, came to our elementary school, has been practicing on Flipgrid. He goes in and he looks, you know, the beginning of the school year, he was speaking pretty much Spanish. He was responding in Spanish and whatever. Long about November, you, there are some English words in there, you know, and when we created an Emmanuel mixtape and he could look and, and hear his own progression. And we shared that with his parents. Oh, wow. The difference between Emmanuel in September and Emmanuel in, you know, May or whatever, when we shared that, it just shows that progression. It's a really powerful collection of just 
Manny, uh, manuals. Uh, so you can actually use that as like a, um, like proof of proof of work as well. Like, you know how it's like, like an Acum folder, you can, you put a collection of students uh, work in there. Like you can actually have a digital collection of students work in a mixtape. Right. Proof and, and progress as well. Wow. Or you can cool. anything, Kim. If this year, if you run 50 flip hunts, I hope you do, at your school, <laughs> and you have like favorite videos, videos that just crack you up, you can just take those, those funny and and in part, my funny favorites and have a, a, you know, all the people who just cracked you up. And then you'll have that collection to share when you go out and do PD on flip hunts, which I know you will, right? And then you'll have all your favorite videos to share with your attendees at your sessions. Wow. I, I didn't know that. that it, It's like a mash. It's like a mashup. It's mixtapes. I yeah. was a child of the 80s. Do you remember? I know. I used to have my mixtapes. <laughs> I used to pay for my mixtapes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. They've thrown that in there, and it's really fabulous. Wow. I like that. All right. That's cool. I can, I can definitely see, see that um, being useful in the classroom for teachers, you know, just like you said with Emmanuel story, I like that. I like that it showed progress and progression through the year. That's yeah, digital that's awesome. portfolio. You're absolutely right. Yeah. That's, it's it, yeah, it's a summative assessment. Over yeah. Wow. And then what about shorts? What's shorts? So shorts is the new. I'm glad you're asking. Shorts is the new camera <laughs> feature, um, and I'm going to click on this and kind of show you. So you can use this <laughs> inside of Flipgrid or <laughs> that would be me. Is um, that you? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I was doing some crazy things. <laughs> um, that looks funny. It is funny. So shorts is just all the cool new features that we have in Flipgrid where you can, and there's a link to it here. So you can create in Flipgrid, but you can share them outside of Flipgrid or anywhere. There are just a bunch of neat features that they've added in there. Oops. Um, that you can, you can film in segments and then you can edit or trim each segment, which is super neat. You can, all those filter options that they have, you can, yeah. Wow. It, okay. So it's camera features. Okay. So it's manipulating the camera. Yep. Yeah. Okay. They just put so many cool video editing tools in there uh, in their last updates. And so it's called the shorts cam. Okay, cool. I'll have to check that out. I honestly, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't experiment with the new features um, with it. You know, I, I did this in September with back to school with staff and everything. And I didn't have time to go back into it as well. But now that my PD day is coming up, I got to start thinking, you know, and start, start getting ideas ready for them. So I'm going to, I'm going to play around with this um, and check it out. That's, that's great. I'm glad that you, uh, that you explained that. Well, let me, let me tell you what I've done for you and for anybody, you know, who might see this and you want some resources. So I, I did what you said, you know, here I'm using Wakelet. I've put the resources that I've talked about today and a few I didn't into this Wakelet. So, you know, this is just my header image up here with the logo. There's my contact information here. The first blog that I showed you, what's a flip hunt, the one that I wrote with those resources, that's there. So it's all linked in here. My friends at Flipgrid, wanted to put um, a blog about this on their own blog, a post about this on their own blog. So we kind of co-wrote one that's on the Flipgrid blog itself. Sorry, I didn't mean to go there, but <laughs> there I am. That's what it looks yeah, you like. Are. Yep, and I co-wrote that with them. So there's more information about getting started. The first one, the flip hunt that we did out in Minneapolis, so that's here. The big grid is here. And then the list that I showed you with, you know, hug the Minneapolis PD officer is here. And then the one that I just did at Rewire uh, last weekend is here too, just for all those silly ideas, because I think they work great for PD anywhere. They're not school specific. Yeah. Oh, and one other cool thing, Kim, if you're looking for some ideas or anybody watching is looking for ideas, this one that I started at Minneapolis. So it grew and people were kind of interested in it. And they asked me, could we start contributing to this? So I opened it up to global contributors and then we, there were so many that we sectioned it off into topics. So if I show you the topics here, you'll see 
This is now a place, a crowdsourced place where people have contributed flip hunts that you can look through. So you'll see there's professional development ones and technology ones and ones that librarians can use and foreign language and all these different subject areas. Some have more than others, but there are flip hunts created by other people from around the world that have been adding to this giant one that we started back in Minneapolis two years ago. Oh, wow. That's cool. So that's kind of like your disco library. It's my disco library, but if you can go in the disco library on Flipgrid site and search for Flip Hunt, you'll find even more ideas there. They're everywhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, it's, that's all I see on Twitter is, the, is flip the Flip Hunts and people are doing it and um, that they're, they're loving it, you know, so that's why I'm glad that you're bringing light to it because I think, you know, it's time for, it's time for me to get on the Flip Hunt wagon. <laughs> so, so what are you showing us here now uh, this is the link to the wakelet collection so if you want this <laughs> link I have, I have to share this right so you can yes. scan the QR code or there's the url down at the bottom so it's that collection and everything is in there if there's anything else you'd like me to add in there i can certainly do that no we're gonna put this wakelet collection in the show notes collection for this episode tonight Okay. So everything will be linked in there and then you can see Kathy's wakelet um, and all of her resources through the uh, sweet talk uh, wakelet. Um, because I have other, I have other links in there too for that reference Kathy's uh, episode tonight as well. So we're definitely going to put that in there. Um, I really, that this was great. I'm so glad that you came on. I know i learned a whole bunch. I, I took notes as I do every week with, with my guests, because, you know, that's the beauty of PLN, right? You, you, uh, connect and you learn from each other and you pay it forward and, and, uh, you definitely pay it, pay it forward tonight. And, uh, I'm going to pay it forward on November 5th with staff at my school doing some type of flip hunt. I don't know if I'm going to have three pages full of objectives for them to do. <laughs> you know to go back to so you can go back to any of these ones that I've shared and just steal your ideas from there. Yeah. 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 yeah I'll, I'll check. I'm going to go through it and I'll check it out and, and uh, definitely let you know exactly, uh, you know, some feedback and, and, share my my google doc with you so you can see what i did as well and you can take my ideas if you want them too so it's all good you know but this was awesome this was awesome i'm so glad that you came on today really thanks kathy i, I do have fun too thank this you this is so awesome much. i'm gonna I to hear i hope you tag me in those posts when you do this in your school because i'd really i just i want to see the silliness oh you you're definitely going to get tagged what a silly question that is <laughs> And, and I'm going to give you credit as well, because, you know, like I, like, I just never, I'm like, ah, I don't need to do this. I don't need to do this, but it just, it just goes hand in hand. Like, I think if you're using Flipgrid, why not make it a, a scavenger hunt as well? And, and, and tie it in with your curriculum, because you're really going to get the kids up and moving, collaborating, they're communicating. And they're really, you know, it does target the, the four C's of education, you know, the critical thinking, the creativity, you know, it, it does target all that. And I think it's important to, to showcase something that's good for education. So I'm glad that you did take the time to be on today. I appreciate it. Sure. Oh, oh one last tip. When you create a flip hunt in some way, throw an administrator in there, right? So tell people to like, write stuff on sticky notes and go put it all over the administrator or get, get the principal to sing something because you're drawing them in and showing them what you're doing. And it's just a, it's a, it's a fun thing. To do. So are you, are you, do you think that we should warn them first? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh, that's too funny. Okay. All right. I'll try it. I'll try it. But I don't know. I, I'm not as daring as you, but I'll definitely try it. I'll, uh, I think my administrators would appreciate it and they would get a kick, a kick out of it. So I'll definitely try it. I'll take your advice on that one. And I'll yep. take you on that one as well. <laughs> I might have to make a mixtape of that one. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Wow. All right, Kathy, I'm going to, you got to stop sharing your screen. Oh, oh, okay. Wait, is that, Oh, there we go. Yep. All right. Wait a minute. See, this Zoom is just, hold on. Hold on a minute. 
I got to get used to Zoom. There we go. Now I see you. Okay. I th I'm not used to Zoom yet. Little by little, I'm getting there. But, you know, you find new bumps in the road. You learn something new all the time, you know? Yep. And then you can teach it to me. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to pull you in. I'm going to pull you in. <laughs> Pull you into the podcasting world. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll, I'll just be an admirer. <laughs> oh, you're funny. Well, that is our show for tonight. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share some information with you um, about the Sweet Talk. So if you would like to visit my website, you can go, go to thesweettalk.com. That's the S-U-I-T-E talk.com because some people think it's S-W-E-E, like sweet tooth. Um, so that's why I spell it out. And here's my website. You can subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel. You can join my Facebook group, follow me on Twitter, um, subscribe to the newsletter, and I am on your podcast, your Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, and Google Podcasts. Um, and you can see all the latest episodes here on the homepage. Um, if you would like to be a guest on my show, which I hope that you do consider uh, being a guest, you can fill out this form, and um, I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, I'm scheduling right now for December. Um, here's some quick link, links here and the schedule of who's going to be on. Uh, if you would like to see any past shows, uh, you can go to the episode and podcast list page and all of the links to um, all the shows that I did in the past with past guests will be here as well. And that is it. So with that being said, thank you so much, Kathy. I had such a good time. Thank you, my friend, for being on. It was it was great. We have to do this again. Absolutely. When you can fit, when you can fit little old me in. <laughs> I always always have time for you. Yes, and you know what? If you have any questions about this, you have my phone number. Call me. I will definitely. I'll be texting you. Forget about calling. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. You're welcome. I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye bye.